Hello everyone, this is Bowser Galaxy 10. Oh, I want you a cute little cootie. Welcome one. to our rambling review of Captain Goose. I, I mean Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is the image I remember. <laughs> and it's also hilarious. <laughs> This movie ha is a kind of a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Where at the beginning I was like, eh, this is really underwhelming. Yeah, it definitely it definitely starts off. It out starts weak. off very slowly and very weak, where it's like it's intentionally confusing, which I think doesn't work much for this. It does not yeah, work in its know. favor. It, it does a weird thing where it, like, sets up a mystery, but I I don't know exactly why, but it doesn't seem to do a good job of making you care, care about it. <laughs> yeah. So you're just kind of like, oh, I'm confused. I don't know what's happening. I don't really care. Honestly, I am very glad we went movie order and not chronological, because if this was the first one I saw, I'd be like... I mean, technically, I the am... first one would have been First Avenger, man. Yeah, but... <laughs> you know what I mean, second. though. You know what I mean, though. It'd yeah. be like... Ah. <sighs> yeah. Um... But yeah, afterwards though, after the beginning parts, like once she actually lands on Earth, I was actually really concerned being like, oh god, it's gonna be another one of these. And then it worked! <laughs> yeah. The side characters re- but, but it, she didn't work, the side characters worked. And when she finally gets her time to joke not intended shine she actually becomes a really good character by the end where it's like i'm at least interested to see the where they're going with her and she has good moments yeah um i feel like this might be where we differ a like little it's bit. A really it's a really roller coaster and i'm not quite sure how to feel about the overall thing but it's like Interesting, at, she's interesting at least. I'm not going to say it's like completely, completely amazing or completely uninteresting. I'm just like, she kind of felt like a side character slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of Like this that. really felt like a buddy cop movie. <laughs> Yeah, I, where I, one of them's clearly out beating the other. <laughs> yeah, it, but I think I, I do really think that Samuel L. Jackson kind of steals his show from from Brie Larson a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe it's not even a, a contest. Bit. Yeah, it's more than a little bit. It's by a lot. Like um, this is the best Nick Fury we've had. <laughs> yeah. Nick is Nick is like Nick is treasure. already fantastic. This is the best we've seen of him. He's, he's an absolute treasure in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, yeah, personally, I overall think that Captain Marvel. I I find her kind of snarky, joking around to be pretty funny, but not like incredibly funny. Um, otherwise, she's a, she's alright, she's far from my favorite MCU character, but I don't mind her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think she does kind of bring down the movie somewhat, but. Yeah. I'm not gonna say she's a bad character. Yeah, she's like, not bad, but, but but it's like but it's like I can't say she's my favorite or even like like good. She's interesting currently, or it's like I'm interested to see where she goes from here, <laughs> at least. 
Yeah. Where it's like, it's at least, it's not like the original, it's not like Iron Man 2 or so, where I was like, Iron Man can't hold a movie, where uh, by the end of that, I was like, Iron Man can't hold a movie. She can hold a movie, they just need to do it a bit better. Yeah, she... Like, she's... I have, she has potential... I just didn't. I feel like the Captain Marvel has potential. I just didn't see much of it. <laughs> yeah. Like until the like last half of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but already by that time, Nick Fury is completely eating this. Has already eaten the scenery and is continuing onto the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, let's talk about some of the other characters. Um, Goose. Did you just talk about Goose because he's there? A cat. He's an adorable kitty cat, and he's fun. And they have some really good, really good humor with 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 everybody being scared of him because he's actually a flurkin. Oh no! And then you find out he's actually a flurkin. Yeah. And he's like actually like more really powerful and stuff. Yep. It was, it was pretty funny. What are you what are your feelings about him being the reason Nick lost his eye? It kind of feels ho it's I'm not gonna say it's terrible. It's so ridiculous. It's a it's amazing, honestly, to me. Where it's like where it's like honestly, if you if you ne needed to give the reason, this is one of the best reasons you could possibly give. Where it's like where it's like he just doesn't tell anyone, but it is something stupid like this. That honestly makes Nick Fury. Amazing. <laughs> Where it's like the, he's this super badass character. He has the badass eye patch. How he lose an eye? A cat. <laughs> Man. Honestly, yeah. it feels like the thing that that is like in, in like in the one badass the with how Marvel movies are, always have the comedic edge. It honestly really works. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm honestly very torn on it. On the one hand, I totally get what you're. On the one hand, I totally get what you're saying, and I totally understand that. I also totally get people who felt like they were like, "Oh, they're like building up this like really cool reason why he has this eye patch and stuff." And we really they were. Fun. And then, they, they, I guess people felt like that. Like there was like a. So, um, kind of a mystery they kind of set up to a certain degree and then the the payoff is lol it was a cat ha <laughs> ha and they kind of felt like it was like a, they played it for a cheap joke and I, I kind of understand that so I'm like I don't know how I feel about it personally they were? I never felt that ever <laughs> I don't know that's that's an opinion that I've heard, and it makes sense to me. And I'm like, I don't... I don't know. I think it kind of depends on... I think that kind of depends on your perspective of how seriously you want Marvel to be taking itself. Because there are definitely a lot of people who feel like Marvel, over time, is taking itself less and less seriously, and they don't like it. So, I think it's... Ten, it tends to be people in that kind of camp who think that Marvel is not taking itself as seriously as it should be. And they're kind of upset about it. <laughs> I don't know. That That's a thing. I'm kind of in the middle. I'm not sure. I think it's funny, but I'm also kind of like... Maybe I could... We should have done another reason. I'm not sure. The only t thing that I could say on on Marvel being com more comedic is the thing where it's like the earlier movies weren't comedic, and I wasn't enjoying them <laughs> because they were just nothing. <laughs> they were just yeah, superhero movies. It's honestly the thing that that keeps Marvel away from DC to me. 
Because Marvel can have fun with its characters. Yeah. Meanwhile, DC is like, it feels like every character is on a tight leash. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Honestly, it's the thing that makes the Marvel movies actually really fun compared to the uh, to other ones. Yeah. It is the campiness of, of com It's like, you gotta remember, it's a comic book. Mm hmm Comic books are... It's in the goddamn name! <laughs> That's fair. It's in the goddamn name! Comedy book! Alright. Action comics! Guess what? Action comedy! <laughs> it's kind of the point! <laughs> yeah. How about our... How about Jan Rog and his band of merry people? He's the evil guy, he's right? The, he's, the, he's the crazy guy, yeah. Okay, so, uh... Honestly, the beginning part was the most boring part of the whole movie, so I was like, okay. Yeah. And then by the time that, that that they're doing the flashback, I'm like... Okay, he's the he's a he's of the villain. Yeah. <laughs> like it, the, like by the like it, it goes so slowly with the flashback, thinking that it's going to be a huge reveal. By the time you're like, okay, what's the actual? You're in your head. You're like, what's the actual reveal? Uh, we've already figured out that the green aliens are showing her for a reason. It's like he's evil. <laughs> Especially the moment Joel mentions the the Guardians of the Galaxy 1 villain, I'm like, okay, that's kind of yeah. too much of a dead giveaway. Yeah, Where it's I... like, wow, he's talking to a villain. I wonder if he has ulterior motives. Yeah, I think that is like kind of a weakness of the Primus movie, is it's, it's a little too predictable, I think. You can see where, you if you're paying attention, you can see where it's going kind of a mile away. And it's also kind of has the prequel sin of being of being like, wow, high stakes. We know all of these characters survive. <laughs> we know at least like 90% of these characters survive. <laughs> yeah. Like the only ones that are that are in any danger are the ones that are fully new to this like, movie. Like the scroll of the creed basically. Yeah, it's like those or are the Monica, only options. It's not like Nick Fury loses his whole body. <laughs> I doubt he's cybernetic under all that. <laughs> so it's like so it's like the worst he's gonna lose is the eye. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, but at be... least it doesn't do like some of the other prequels, prequels I've seen where it tries to make you think a character has died when they haven't really. Yeah. Like it didn't actually throw like Nick Fury into space and have Captain Marvel have to transform to rescue him. Otherwise it's like, wow, I wonder if the prequel will kill Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Uh, the intelligence. It's kind of. I, I think the actress is having a lot of fun playing the intelligence. Yeah, that's about it, though. Or it's like, yeah. or it's like the intelligence. The the actress is having a lot of fun. You could replace this with any computer currently. <laughs> Yeah, it's... You could replace yeah. this with literally anything. It's fine. <laughs> I guess. You could replace it with literally any other AI villain currently, and it'd, be, and it'd make as much sense. It yeah. could be the freaking MCP from Tron, and nothing would change about the plot currently. <laughs> yeah, nothing it's... would change about her part of the plot. It's basically, it's, it's not much of a standout. You know, I realized I didn't actually finish talking about the uh, about the Kree dude. Okay. Uh, yeah, honestly, I didn't really have that much more <laughs> to say. Where it's like, where it's like at the beginning it was kind of boring, and then he's and then he slightly gets better. Where it's like, he's kind of obvious villain, he goes through the obvious villain tropes, 
Surprised to not see him dead. Hoping he's not just some rival character in what in if Captain Marvel gets a sequel. He better not get it's like it's like, yep, he exists. He's a villain. He's not the worst, he's not the best, he's kinda of meh. Yeah. And then Supreme Intelligence, we just It's clear that this is part one of the story. Yeah, and okay. it's like, yeah, cool what? scene of Captain Marvel defying it to get her superpowers. It's, but other than that, it's like, yeah. Honestly, pretty much everything revolving around the Kree is a little bit milk toast. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about the scroll dudes? Honestly, I was invested the whole time whenever they were on screen. They they have really good actors. They have really good voices. The comedy's great, actually. Yeah, and it's like... Like, every time they showed up, I was having fun. Yeah, they're <laughs> and, great, actually. Like, them and Nick Fury make this movie work. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I'd be like, eh... <sighs> I'd probably be putting this up, be around like Iron Man Three if it wasn't for them. <laughs> where it's like, where it's like, yeah, the movie's ha the movie happened. It was good. I'd I'd uh, watch. I'd watch. I'd recommend someone watch it. Would I watch it myself? No. <laughs> but yeah, with them, this movie rises a lot higher. Not anywhere near like top six or so, but it's like, but it's like. Yeah. You could put this in the bottom of your top ten, and I wouldn't be. And currently, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah. If it has the stuff, if it has the stuff you like, I'd see it. Yeah, I think this has. I think this has good, solid comedy. Um, the action is fine. The action is, gets good around the yeah. time where Mar yeah. where Captain Marvel is actually doing stuff. Yeah, I will say though. I will say though, one thing that I dislike like a little bit is uh, pretty much as soon as, as pretty much as soon as Captain Marvel like gets her like full power, like any any tension is gone. Any fight scene involving her has no tension anymore. You, she, she, especially after she like blows up all of blow, like after she like fights off the entire. Kree fleet single-handedly, basically, you're like, okay, yeah, no, there's nothing... Like, like literally, the only reason this. villains would be alive at this point is because they were in other movies, so they can't die yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's prequelitis, it's where it's like, the only reason that guy's not dead is because he has to go get danced off. <laughs> Later. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's weird that... It's really weird, honestly, that they... That they set up him being like, we'll get her later. And we already know he's not going to because Star Lord where, where, dances. Where it's off like, I'm, I, I'm betting that guy is, is like, is like, I'm going to have a super epic death against her. Our battle will be legendary. Dance off, bro. You and me. Uh. Honestly, it kind of fits the seriousness of his of that villain in Guardians of the Galaxy when the whole rest of that movie is comedic, <laughs> where he's like he's imagining his super epic death battle against Captain Marvel, and then this guy just dances and then he dies, <laughs> like he has laughed off the MCU dead villains <laughs> after life yeah. after that. <laughs> Wrecked. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think this movie is good. I think this movie is good, but I think it's carried pretty hard by the comedy. I don't think. I think this movie would be pretty low if not for the comedy. Like, if it wasn't for the comedy, I'd probably be putting this around like like original Iron Man or so, where it, where I, it's like yeah, I, where it's like this movie like Nick Fury and the Skrulls, they carry this movie. Yeah, I, like like with Captain Marvel's interesting, but this is like part one interesting. 
this is not <laughs> like like without the comedy carrying it, it would not have won. Yeah. Like it would I, not be anywhere close. Yeah, without the comedy, I think this would be like th this would this would basically beat out like the bad MCU movies, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, would I put this next to the t to the d direct bottom? No. Would it still be bottom ten? Probably. I think it probably. <laughs> I think it would. I think it would be like. I think it would be probably around like fifth from the bottom ish, if not for the comedy. Yeah. It probably somewhere between. It'd be. Reminder that w that I actually like Thor: Dark World. It'd probably be clo It'd probably be a bit lower than that. <laughs> I would put it above Thor Dark World. I, well, it'd probably be pretty close to Thor Dark World without it, the comedy. Yeah, it's honestly <laughs> kind of close where Thor Dark World is very carried by Thor and Loki. Yeah. Where honestly, yeah, I'd probably put it under Thor Dark World if it if it wasn't for the comedy. But it, it, with the comedy, it's like... It's like, if someone put this in their, like, top, like, near the bottom of their top ten, like, in the top fifteen, I'd be like, yeah, I can see where they're go, where they're coming from. So, where, where it's like, there's enough good here, is there enough for me? Not particularly. The comedy carries it. Would it be enough for some people? I can see it being enough for some people. Yeah. If you put it in your top five, I don't know what you're doing. But if it's like top, like between top ten and top fifteen, I'm like, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah. Um. Will we recommend this movie for pretty much everyone? I'm not totally sure. I will say one thing interesting about this movie. My brother watched Endgame before this movie, and he hated Captain Marvel in Endgame. Because <laughs> hmm. <laughs> because you just don't get a lot of her like character in Endgame, and he just found her really obnoxious, and he found her to be a lot a lot less annoying after he watched this movie. And he's like, okay, I, I can get the character I can now. see that happening where it's like, you really need to kind of like see her grow through this one where it's like, if you're watching them in order, like we have, would I skip this? No, I wouldn't skip it. If I'm watching through it yeah. the, for the first time, this is not one to skip, <laughs> but it's like, if, am I going to go back to this? Maybe not. Yeah, I I would like on a rewatch through the M on a rewatch through the MCU. I might consider skipping this one. Honestly. Yeah, but 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 it's like but it's like 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 would I consider skipping it? Probably. Would I YouTube the YouTube the fun the fun the funny Nick Fury scenes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, Nick Fury carries this movie. Nick Fury and the Skrulls carry this movie. <laughs> yeah. And Goose is he's a go kitty cat. Mm hmm Who's a go kitty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that's it for our rambling review of Captain Marvel. Uh, so next MCU is Endgame. <gasps> And from what Joel has told me, so, he only knows knows very high or very low. <laughs> the ratings consist of very high or very low. <laughs> I mean, I guess that that's kind of what you expect from. It's the, either top five like or bottom ten. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of, I think, what you expect from climactic finale. It's going to be extremely divisive, no matter. Yeah. <laughs> See Kingdom Hearts 3, for example, for another example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like it's going to be that kind of thing, where it's like, it's either going to be the... 
it's either going to be King. It's like it's like it's like next to there with like with like Kingdom Hearts free and Mass Effect free, where it's like good fucking luck if you get this wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like if you get this wrong, oh god. <laughs> yeah, some very big shoes to fill for sure. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, that'll be the next MCU review. That will be Review 70. We will have something in the middle of this one. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But yeah, for Captain Marvel herself, interested to see where she's going from here. Is she going to be in my top superheroes of the MCU? Probably not. <laughs> But it's like, I'm interested to see where they're going with her. Alright. We'll see you guys in whatever video you watch next. Yep. Until then, take care. Don't get squashed by Kitty. Meow.